Okay, here we are. This is the downward block. Okay, so this is your second block and also a fundamental element of Taikyoko Shodan, which is the kata you'll learn later. All right, so the downward block. This block protects us from attack that's coming in towards our gut, towards your stomach, between the solar plexus and the groin. Okay, so the lower portion of your abdomen. And it's particularly useful against an attack that's coming in straight. Okay, so a straight attack coming in. It can also be used against something swinging in from the side. So something coming in this way or that way, like a kick, right? So if a kick is coming in, it can uh, protect you from, from that, all right? So, uh, but preferably something straight, at least in the beginning. So imagine that, something coming straight towards your gut. So for this one, we prepare, we begin our block the same way we did for the upward block. We're gonna put our, uh, let's block with our right hand. Okay, so we're gonna start with our right hand up and our left hand down, all right? And now, to do this block, the top hand is the blocking hand, and the bottom hand is the guarding hand. It's the hand that's not going to do the block, so it's the guarding hand. So the top hand is going to come down, it goes over to the shoulder, it comes down the arm, and then it's gonna end up out here. I'm leaving this arm here just so you can see the indicator, okay, of what's happening. This block is crossing my body. Okay, so it comes over on this side, and then it comes down in this sort of a diagonal sweep. Okay, so it's going to come up, it starts in front of my face, it comes across, and then it comes down and across. Okay, so it's protecting this area. Again, the other hand, the guarding hand's job, is to go to chamber. So this hand starts here, and it goes to chamber. So to put this together, the top hand, I squeeze the elbows together, the top hand comes down, the other hand withdraws to chamber. My block should end up just outside my hip, as you can see it did. It's not out here to the side. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, if you have this big gap between your hand and your hip, close that gap, bring your hand in so it's just outside of your hip. That's all you need. You don't need to push the attack way over there, okay? So from here, the hand is up, this hand is down. The downward block, the top hand now goes down, and the bottom hand draws to chamber. So here we block, and prepare, and block, and prepare, and block, and prepare, and block, and prepare, and now I'm gonna put this hand behind my back. I want you to watch my blocking hand. The blocking hand stays. It's starting here, sort of as if I were holding a microphone. I can see, the, the ring of my hand. I can see my thumb and I can see this part of my, my fist, okay? As I start the block, I'm gonna turn that hand. So that hand comes in and the back of the fist is away from me and again, the palm and the fingers face me. As the hand comes down, I can see that the whole time. My palm stays up, the fingers are facing me. My palm is up, the fingers are facing that way now, out to the side. And at the very end, it's going to turn over. So I have this rotation in the block when the hand turns from here to here. And that happens right at the end. That would be about as I'm striking what I'm hitting. Okay? So what, as I'm striking that attack. So this hand, it comes down. You can see the back of my hand. I can see my fingers. It comes down. And then it turns. Okay? So there's a little rotation. I don't want to just keep it like this and slide it down where there's no rotation in the fist. I want to turn that, lead the way with the back of the hand. So as this crosses my front, the back of my hand leads the way. See, you can see my thumb, okay? And then it turns out, okay? So when we put this together, I start from here, and I block down and turn that hand at the end, okay? So this is the downward block. I prepare, block, prepare, block, prepare, block, prepare, block. Prepare, block. Prepare, block, prepare. To break that down, block. I bring my blocking hand up to guard. My chamber hand punches, or sorry, to prepare. My chamber hand punches down to guard. And now my top hand blocks, okay? So to prepare, I'm going to bring my blocking hand up to prepare. My chamber hand punches down to guard, and I block. So that would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, 
two, three. Okay, so to do this block with a partner, again, here, Sente Mister, so welcome him back. All right. All right, so this block, again, is protecting me from an attack to the stomach region, the gut, okay, a low attack. So he's going to step in with a straight punch, and because I said a nice straight attack coming in and punch right there. Okay, so if I don't move, if I don't do anything about that, I'm going to get hit. So again, he's going to move slowly. I'm going to show you first with my left hand. Okay, so this means I'm going to block on the inside of his arm. So from here, here he comes, and I'm going to block that attack. Okay, it, sw it knocks his arm out and away. All right, and notice again how my block is in front of me. It's out here. It's not down here. If it's down here, I miss. I can swing my arm all the way out. Okay, so one more time, he's going to come in, and I'm going to block. So, block. And I want to block on his forearm. All right, so that's the downward block to the inside of his arm. I can also block with my other hand to the outside of his arm. So, as he comes in, I can block and knock him that way. Okay, so again, here he comes, and I block him that way. Okay, one more time. I'm blocking to the outside of his arm. This way. Okay, so a brief discussion about some concept here that you guys, it'd be good for you to start to understand. In martial arts, there are good and bad, okay? Good thing, every block has a weakness, every block has a strength. Everything we do has a weakness and a strength. And there's advantage and disadvantage to everything that happens. So when he steps in and he punches, obviously I don't want to stay in front of that because that's where all the power is. Okay? But if I block on the inside and knock his arm out, which is what I did at first, I blocked on the inside and knocked his arm out, the challenge here is that that puts me right in front of this weapon here. So that makes it so that he can really hit me very easily if I knock his arm out that way. It's not, a, it's, it's not good or bad, I just need to know that this is going to happen. Okay, so if I block on the inside of his arm and knock his arm out, he's able to strike me with this hand, he's able to strike me with that foot, he could do a knee strike, or he could, go ahead, do a knee strike. Okay, he could strike me with that, and he could strike me with this foot, simply by put, shifting his weight back a little bit and striking upward with this leg, he could do a kick. Uh, any number of things, okay? So he has three weapons that he can strike me with fairly easily if I knock his arm out. So one more time, if I block to the inside of his arm, I have to be prepared for these weapons to come at me. The good news for me, though, about going here is that all of his vital targets are exposed to me. So there are pros and cons, right? He has more weapons, but he also has more vulnerable areas. So he has his face, the nose, he has the throat, he has the solar plexus, he has the, the sternum, he has the ribs, he has the groin, etc. It's all open and available to me to hit. Okay, so pros and cons. If I go to the outside of his arm, so when he comes in here and I block to the outside, now I've knocked his arm across his weapon. So he can't strike me with that hand easily at all. He's twisted up and this, hand, this arm is blocking that. That leg is really put out because this weight, when I knock this arm across, it puts his weight on his toes, it's hard for him to pick up that leg, okay? So I've kind of taken away his three weapons, which is good, but I don't have a lot of great targets on this side of the body, okay? So there's some good targets, but not a lot of great ones. Could you just switch sides so that they can see that side of the body? Yeah, so we're here, so just as if you stepped in. No. Stepped in with this hand. No, oh. I don't want that side of your body. Yep, there you go. Oh. This hand out. There you go. <laughs> okay, so now, so what I do have on this side of the body, though, I have ribs, I have kidneys, I have a knee I can strike, and, you know, I might have some access to the side of the head or maybe to the neck from here, depending on what's happening. But, so I have a few targets, but I'm safer because I've eliminated some of his weapons. So, again, pros and cons. Okay, so we just go back to the other side again. Okay, so you're going to step in a punch with that hand. Okay, and I'm going to block to the inside. We have a name for this. When we block to the inside, we call that opening the gate. When we block to the outside, we call that closing the gate. Okay, so this arm being the gate. I've closed it across or I've opened it up. It's a simple concept and I'm throwing it out there because I want you to be thinking about it. Even though we can't do a lot of per partner work, this is a, a fundamental martial arts concept. We have to know 
which position we're putting ourselves and our partner in with every technique that we do. Okay? So, thank you very much, Sensei Mister. Very good. All right. So that's the downward block. 